So today we have an iPhone 6s Plus that we are going to be trying to get information off of. Unfortunately, it is not an iPhone 4. I was really hoping that it would be an iPhone 4, but it is not. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in using one of these lovely cables that you can purchase on store.rossmangroup.com. See, you can plug this cable into the power supply. It then plugs into the phone. It's a premium cable. It's so premium and thick that it actually keeps dragging the board off of the desk, but that's not the fault of the cable. That's just it being so premium. It's thick with two C's. Exclusively available <laughs> at store.rossmangroup.com. Now, uh, what we're going to be doing here is uh, trying to figure out what it does. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have the battery connector plugged in here. And this is not an actual battery. This is my power supply so that I can see how many amps it's using. And that's plugged in. And it's drawing 10 milliamps. Then I'm going to prompt it to boot by plugging in this lightning cable into this USB-C amp meter, also available in store.rossmangroup.com, into my computer. Fortunately, I don't have a USB extension cable because Kevin stole it. Sorry. But, and then we're going to see what it does. So it's taking 20 to 30 milliamps, and then it appears to be jumping up to 200 milliamps for very short periods of time, and then turning off. Now, this phone had been ultrasonic once before we got it, but it was ultrasonic in a very noob way. And what I mean when I say noob way is that they ultrasonic it without removing the shields. And as you know, there are components that are hiding under the shields. So if you have, if this shield is still on top of this phone, like if you have this thing soldered on top of here, it's kind of, it would be like trying to wipe your ass through your pants. And you, would, you don't want to wipe your ass through your pants, and you don't want to try to clean a liquid damaged phone through, with the shields on. It doesn't make any damn sense. How dare you get a Galaxy Fold? But eh, the phone's too damn expensive, man. You guys are crazy. I just turn this fan lower so you don't have to hear that annoying noise. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the area that had the most corrosion. So I removed the shield from the board, and this thing's already been through an ultrasonic. And the area that had the most... So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the main power rail, which is typically going to be by the battery connector. So I am going to go to display capture here. I have my PDF reader. So the battery connector is J2400. So we're going to look for J2400 and see that the rail that I'm supposed to be getting around there is present. So we go to J2400. So the first thing we're going to do is see if PP Bat BCC is present. Now PP Bat, Bat VCC, this is kind of similar to PP Bus G3 Hot on a MacBook. And PP, B, PP Bat VCC is going to turn into VCC Main, which is the main power rail that goes to everything. So PP underscore Bat underscore VCC. Uh, if we just keep searching for this, and eventually it goes to PP VCC Main over here. So this is VCC main. So the first thing I want to do is see where I can find PP VCC main and see that we have voltage coming into the phone and also see that that power rail is not shorted to ground. I want to make sure that I have my PP VCC the same way that I want to make sure that I have my PP bus. It's important to have your PP bus and it's important to have your PP VCC. What we're going to do here is we're going to check on C2333 where it is the first place that I can find the VCC main. C2333 and that is going to be on, no, come on. This, this is awful. This is almost worse than Paul Daniels' software. All right, so that's going to be on the other side of the board over here. We have a capacitor. So you can see the phone is trying to run away from me because it doesn't want to give me the data. But that, you know, nice try, Mofo. Nice try. You're going to give me your data whether you like it or not. There's no place for you to run. There's no place for you to hide. So C2333, we're going to measure voltage and I'm going to see if that's working and also if there's any sort of short circuit. So, man, this is a very dirty multimeter probe. iPhone 4 or Galaxy Fold? iPhone 4. By far, iPhone 4. You can fold an iPhone 4, and it's also much more fun to fold an iPhone 4 than it is to fold a Galaxy. So we have 4.26 volts at VCC main. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit because the iPhone is such a pain in the ass to deal with when it comes to going through the list of power rails since it doesn't actually give me a list in the schematic the same way that MacBook does. What I'm going to do is I'm going to check by the area that was corroded. So when I took the shields off, even though this had been ultrasonic before, there was still a bunch of corrosion in this area. And this is the area, and even after ultrasonic, you can see that there was evidence of some stuff left there. So what I want to do is I want to figure out if anything in this area is suspect. Now, the way I'm going to do that is by using my basic knowledge of what these components are, I'm going to try to search for power rails and see if I can find one that has some sort of issue with it. So on this phone, on most of these surface mount devices, black is a resistor, 
Um, blue, uh, black is a resistor. This brownish is a capacitor. This gray brownish is an inductor. And blue stuff is wild card funsies that I, I don't I forget what that is. And the black stuff is a chip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check all the brown things that are capacitors. Now, typically, most capacitors on this phone are going to be bypass capacitors. Those are capacitors that are going to be used for smoothing a power line. So typically, I can assume that most of these capacitors are on a power line. And if any of them have a really low diode mode measurement to ground, that would typically mean that that line is shorted to ground somehow. So that's where I should be looking for my problem. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, remember, certain lines are going to have a very low resistance or diode mode reading to ground as a result of what they're powering. So if it's something powering a CPU, I'm not going to be as concerned with a low diode mode reading as I would be with a different type of power line. And that is, in order to have a very low voltage line provide a high amount of power, you need to have a low resistance to ground. This is just basic Ohm's law. And if you use an Ohm's law calculator, and let's say you put something in like 1.2 volts, but I want 60 watts, like for a CPU, you're going to notice that the resistance is really low. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off power to the phone, which I just did. I just turned off power to the phone and I'm going to check and see what my readings are on a bunch of these different capacitors. So I'm going to have the red probe be on ground over here and then I'm going to have the black probe go on many of the different capacitors which ones are m messed up if any. You may notice that this microscope uh, mount has this big netting effect that my other one didn't which sucks. Unfortunately there's not really much I can do about it. I am going to try to switch back to my old microscope mount because it was considerably better than this one. I really hate that they don't sell that anymore. Like they sell part of it, but they don't sell the piece that allows you to attach it to it on the microscope itself. And these longer tubes, so like this, this, well, you can't really, this longer tube setup, the longer the tube, the, what I've noticed is that there's much more vignetting and I don't like it. So I'm going to figure out how to switch back to that maybe after I'm done with this stream. So if, let's go. So over here we have ground. Okay. But so that side is going to be ground. So that's not no, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. Now sometimes it's going to beep intermittently, but that's just because it's a lower diode mode reading. Yeah, but that doesn't necessarily mean that beeping doesn't necessarily mean short circuited. Beeping doesn't necessarily mean bad. Okay, you're ground. Are you ground? No, you're point 2. And you're ground. Point. So yeah, so point 2. And you'll notice that things that are next to each other are typically the same. So I'm hearing beeping, but I'm not getting excited yet because that doesn't necessarily mean I have a short. Remember, I'm looking for a low number on each side. So 0 0.9 volts, that's an LDO. We have PP1VO, we need that. Uh, PP0V9, I'm guessing that we're going to need that. So I'm going to check all the power rails that are right by where things are messed up. PP1V2, PP1V8, PP1VO, PP3075, PP095. There's PP09 and PP095. Really, this chip is so fucking picky that it's like, now I want 0.9 volts. And now I want 0.95 volts. And now I want 1 volt. Really? You're that, you're that picky, you little effing iPhone. All right. Fine, you little fuck. We'll check all of your rails. But you better, you're going to boot after we check all these rails. Now, ain't you? All right, let's start with all these little LDOs. Oh my god, I'm a noob! Oh, nobody showed Jess of the stream. This is fucking embarrassing. What the fuck? How did I miss this? Am I blind? I took as long to find, almost as long to find the short as Kevin keeps customers on hold. Okay, so I guess the idea that the corrosion was isolated to one specific area is an idea that I have to throw out the window. Just merciless here. Merciless. No mercy. One, two, three. One, two, three. Alright, so I have to change my strategy here because I thought that all the corroded stuff was on the other side, but it wasn't. And here we go. What are you two bastards up here? Alright, zero on this side. And point three two nine on this side. That's not a short circuit, but I don't care that that's not a short circuit. They still look kind of nasty, so... Oh, sure, how about you? That's a nasty-looking corrosion right there. This is so cruel. Can it, will anybody think of the poor little packages?
Disgusting practice. Get the fuck out of here. Ba boom. We're much more careful with hot air on a phone. Less temperature, less air. I'm not even using anything remotely close to MacBook temperatures here. Now for a backlight diode. Blah. You're no good. You gotta go. I should get a set of tweezers up here. I do have the station that's able to power the tweezers. Let's see. Got the diode. Okay, so 3539 is upside down in this position, so I have the orientation. Okay, it was definitely the chip. So look at, look at those bottom left balls, and I bet that the bottom left balls on this would be for feedback or anything related to feedback or switching. Yes, yeah, so I don't want to put a new chip on until those bottom left pads are clean. Now, even though it looks like I'm scraping, at the same intensity. I have a useless hand. It's really strange that I chose this as a profession to get into with completely worthless hands. But as I say, this was an accident. Ooh, melting. Don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't smoke, don't blow up, don't smoke, don't blow up, don't smoke, don't blow up. Enter passcode. One, okay, we have touch. Yeah, yeah, that's right, Jernage, you European snob saying it's not gonna boot, it's not gonna boot, it's not gonna boot. Freedom! You enjoy your high taxes. All right. The thing is, I am not gonna get any money for this because I don't have a fucking passcode. <laughs> <laughs> I just broke my chair. Drive savers can suck it. In my neighborhood. What are these, apricots? Mmm. I have no idea what it means, these nuts. Does it keep restarting? See you all later.
Do you have a MacBook that needs to be fixed? Come by our store, which is open to the public at 186 First Avenue in Manhattan. Are you located outside of New York? No problem. Send us a machine from anywhere in the world by going to our website and clicking on the mailbox or simply heading over to sendyourmacbook.com. That's sendyourmacbook.com where you'll be redirected to our mail-in instructions page that includes the form and the directions on how to send us a MacBook for repair. We have a live chat where you can speak with us about the repair that you need, a phone number where a representative will pick up during our open hours, and a contact form where you can contact us about repairs.